Hey everyone, Jason Portwando joining you once again. It is time for another edition of Racing Around the World presented by HPI Bet. We've got the Saudi Cup. We've got the Blue Diamond Stakes. Some JRA huge news. Woodbine Mohawk Park is back and so too is that bet battle. Let's roll. Reunited and it feels so good. Jason Portwando, Chad Rosema with you as we get set to race around the world. Literally, Chad, as we are reaching locales yep. today that we have yet to reach on this program. All over the place. And you know what? One locale we're super excited about is basically in our backyard, Woodbine Mohawk Park. And yes. you talked about it. We were so happy they're back. They had a great opening night last night. And, uh, you know, despite the snow, uh, they still got through it. It was a great handle, so happy to see everybody playing along. And uh, I'd be even happier, Jason, if for Lent you decided to give up picking winners because I'm getting sick and tired of this. I'll gladly give up picking horses for the bet battle because I'm still blanked. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on, plus a brand new format. Yeah, just to give you a bit of a sneak peek. But let's take a look at the schedule as per usual. A ton of racing action. And it truly is an international edition of the program. Now, keep in mind, at the time of the taping of this broadcast, these are the tracks scheduled to be on for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Things could obviously change, Chad. Yeah, there's just so much snow, uh, you know, hitting everywhere and canceling, you know, racetracks. But we still got a big menu. And, and as you say, this is what we're expected to have. And there it is, Woodbine Mohawk Park. Friday is night two of our 2021 season, seven o'clock first post time. So many great wagers with that. Then we get into Saturday and early on, there is going to be a big highlight for us, Jason, from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, that huge program capped off by that $20 million event. $20 million, I don't care what the currency, $20 million, obviously that's significant. It is the world's richest race, looking forward to that. Then we carry you through Saturday, Saturday night, big news, courtesy of the Japan Racing Association. Cole Sebner, senior manager of simulcast wagering for HPI Bet, will drop by a little bit later on in the program to break that down for us as we go through the rest of the weekend. But of course, the headliner will be that $20 million race. And even though we have all these racetracks, I can guarantee you that people watching and wagering on those events will have their eyes fixated on the huge anticipated battle between Charlatan and Nick's Go. Chad and I will have our selections coming up, but let's talk some stakes here, partner. Yeah, well, Australia, it'll be Saturday for them, but it's going to be late tonight on, you know, on the Friday through HPI bet. Caulfield, uh, headlined by the Blue Diamond Stakes for the two-year-olds, one and a half million Australian dollars for that group one. It's an all-stakes card. It's going to be fantastic. And then we get into Saturday, and yes, all stakes again at King Abdulaziz racetrack. Saudi Cup will cap it off in race number eight. And that is expected to go at about 1240 Eastern time on Saturday. Uh, and again, you can watch and wager through HBI bet. We've got so much great stuff. And then you talked about it going all around the world, Jason. You know, the uh, Japan Racing Association with the February stakes from Tokyo. We've got that Saturday, then Shatin in Hong Kong. They always have, uh, you know, big stakes events and huge pools to play into as well. Speaking of which, you want to play into this, 500,000 points. Wow, that, that must be a lot of points. Uh, keep an eye on this mm -hmm. program. There's a look at the specifics and the featured tracks, this time around being Tokyo Racecourse, King Abdul Aziz, obviously. We've talked about that a ton. And it's somewhat appropriate, Chad, that we're focusing in on the other side of the world right now because North yeah. America, yeah, there are racetracks that are competing. We do have some great stakes events as well, but with the weather being the way it is, let's just focus where we know snow will not be an issue. And you know what? Oakland again, Chad, had to cancel, right? So, My goodness, it's unbelievable how much they're getting hit with snow. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it is. It is. All right, we talked about it being a different formatted show. Why? We have a shot clock, not 24 seconds like the NBA. We're going to add in 21 more. So a 45 second shot clock to uh, just keep it moving here on racing around the world. And I'm looking forward to it. You? Yeah. I mean, they're basically, you know, saying, Rosema, enough talking. We're going to, we're, we're <laughs> going to, we're going to put you on a timer now and keep you quiet. 
Australia. Let's begin there. Caulfield Racecourse, Victoria. And we've talked about the Blue Diamond. The stars of tomorrow. we got the two-year-olds chasing a purse of $1.5 million. They're traveling six furlongs is what we like to call it. 1,200 meters is the trip for them. And there is a scratch in there of an undefeated filly by the name of Dosh. Yeah, and there's another undefeated one right beside in Enthar, who's, uh, you know, they're talking like she's a superstar, right? And, and she has her eyes on that golden slipper coming up in, in March. But I'm going to try and beat the heavy favorite with another one. that has got a big shot in Animo. Uh, was a fast closing second uh, to General Bow last time in the prelude to this stakes event. And that was going five and a half. Now gets that extra 16th of a mile to work with here this time and I, you know i think this is just an improving horse that gets blinkers added and you know might be around that third choice in the wagering and hopefully the extra ground is going to help this one and and uh it's actually going to line up right beside that talented philly enthar so that's my pick animal all right all right sounds good and you know you take a look at the field and for me uh, whenever you're talking juveniles you always have the question mark, right? Uh, little nicks here, little injuries there, like young kids. Sometimes they get a little bit of a sniffle, a cold, a cough, whatever the case may be. But, you know, Enthar, the first vet check wasn't a good one. She actually wasn't deemed good enough to compete. And then early Friday morning, I do believe, they said, you know what? Second vet check looked a lot better. Looked like she's getting back to herself. She's not the smoothest going filly to begin with. So, the fact that she's got a little bit of a you know hitch in her step doesn't bother me. Hey, you can't argue with perfection, right? She's a perfect two for two to start her career. Love the way Mark Zara got a chance to get to know her last time out. She's quick, and I don't think the added distance is going to be much of a problem for her. I say she remains perfect. I've got Enthar as the favorite, just under two and a half to one going in to get it done. We're going to find out. All right, so that is a look at Caulfield's race. Now let's get to the big one. You got $20 million yeah. on the line. It, it's a brand new race. Just started last year, right? So we will have the second running of the Saudi Cup. $20 million on the line. Hey, trivia time, Chad. Uh, who won okay. uh, last year's race? Who, who, who was it? Maximum security. Maximum security. Oh, Ch Chad was on the ball. Chad was on the ball. All right, yeah. So yeah, I only had uh, we should remember. note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should note a couple of riders' issues to get there. Uh, John Velasquez oh, will not make it. So William Buick gets the call there with Tacitus. Max Player awaiting a rider there because, you know, Roberto, uh, Umberto, sorry, Rispoli was supposed to ride. You know, this COVID-19 is just, you know, just wreaking havoc, Chad. Yeah, uh, Mike Smith's there safely. He's actually already riding on the Friday program in the Jockeys International Challenge, uh, taking over for Johnny V yeah. and that. So uh, Charlatan will get his rider uh, there. As uh, you talked about it, looking forward to that matchup between Charlatan and Nick Sko. And do you remember me saying in, you know, after the Pegasus World Cup, I've learned my lesson, I'm going to pick against Nick Sko? Well, yep, I'm going to pick against <laughs> Nick Sko. I'm going to go Charlatan, who hasn't raced yet this year, but... He's so impressive. He's a superstar, and I think he's going to be able to track just like he did in the Malibu. And uh, track Nick's go is going to be the speed in this race. They've got that long run up until the opening turn, and I think he's going to be able to turn on the Jets. It's going to be a great finish. I see this battle going right down to the wire between these two, and I think this is a battle that is, is going to go on throughout the entire year. I think we could have a lot of fun with these two very, very talented superstars. <sighs> I'm with you. Uh, don't want to say it's a two-horse race, but really feel like it's just a two-horse race. I mean, you got the, the undefeated charlatan. We know about the resume that he comes in with. That resume does not need a cover letter, as I like to say. Nick's go undefeated since going to Brad Cox care. And this horse is just a flat-out freak. And, and I tried to beat him last time out, but I learned my lesson. Unlike you, Chad, I will <laughs> not mess with Nick's go. Not only is he quick, but that velocity. He can keep it going for such a long time. So, hey, that is a scary combination. So, I think Nick's go, you know, just keeps going. And I think he just runs that win streak to, what, five, if I'm not mistaken, five or six, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the fact that Rosario makes the trip. But I will say this. If our two horses battle each other into submission, Mishriff really intrigues me. Lone dirt start at that course wasn't all that bad. Finished a pretty good second. So, Mishriff is the wild card for me. Do you have a wild card or no? I, I didn't go that way, but maybe try and pick a closer because it is a deep track. Can get to be a little bit tiring there with that Saudi sand. So, uh, you yeah. know, maybe maybe look for a price if these two do battle it out. All right. A couple of four-race win streaks on the line. Looking forward 
to that. Well, also looking forward to what we have coming up, Woodby Mohawk Park. We'll have that a little bit later on. But big news for those of you who like to wager on Japanese racing. Been there, done that. Uh, HPI bet members <laughs> will uh, like this. We've got Klaus Ebner. Had a chance to speak with him earlier this week. He's a senior manager of HPI bet, simulcast, and wagering. Big news, and he's going to share it with us right now. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you're both doing well. So through HPI, we're going to offer 24 Grade 1 race dates from Japan this year. We start off this weekend with the Grade 1 February stakes from Tokyo Racecourse on the dirt at a mile of distance. Uh, this is a winning or in challenge race for the British Cup Classic, so maybe you may see a horse winning here uh, that races in Del Mar in November. So you're going to ask yourself, well, what's in it for me? Well, it's available through me through HPI Wager on Japan. So we do have two 50% takeout pick fives, so an early and a late pick five. And we also have a 50% super high five available for you. In terms of the wagering, you're going to say, well, what else is there? How do I bet these races? Well, the pedigrees are very simple. They're all American oriented. So you know, if you're going to see horses by American Pharaoh, Empire Maker, et cetera, you'll figure it all out. No problem. Uh, and in terms of jocks, that's where you want to focus on in terms of how to make your real money is in terms of the jocks in this race. So in North America, we have, you know, big money, Mike, Mike Smith. Well, in Japan, we have big cash, Christophe, if you will, Christophe Lemaire. Big money rider, wins at over 20% strike rate. Uh, so you look at him as one of the jocks, as well as others such as Yuga Kawada, uh, Yusaka Take, and Yuichi Fukunaga. And then in the February stakes this weekend, uh, which is again a grade one race on the dirt, uh, we're going to focus on two horses here that I think have a big shot. Uh, favorites have won this race around 40% of the time over the past 10 years, and I think both these horses will probably be, you know, be their first or second or third choice in this race. Uh, Auvergne was one of the horses I'm looking at in here. Uh, want a key prep for this race in the Tokai Stakes as a start. as a big shot here. Probably one of the favorites, but again, I think he'll get the job done. If you're looking for another horse who's kind of a developing horse, you can look at Cafe Pharaoh. So yes, the name suggests he's by American Pharaoh, American bred. Uh, didn't run that well in his last start in December, which is the champion stakes, also grade one race in Japan. Uh, but I think this horse by freshman can do very well here. One other thing to note is there's a derby prep on the undercard here, which is the highest in stakes. So again, lots to look at Japan, but best of luck. Appreciate that close. Yes, we say konnichiwa. There's a look at what we have on deck, HPI bet style, and gotta love that low takeout of 15%. That's what it's all about. Welcome, welcome, welcome. HPI bet now officially the North American home for Japanese racing. Goodbye, Mohawk Park. The gates fly from the beautiful Niagara Escarpment in Campbellville, Ontario, Canada. The best harness racing action in North America goes down four nights a week. Rushes up on the far outside. Full fields, exotic wagers, award-winning broadcasts. World-class harness racing from Woodbine Mohawk Park. You gotta play here. That's right. Guess who's back? And I gotta admit the pitchers weren't as pretty as those last night. But hey, we got through a snow-filled fun day of qualifiers and racing on Thursday. Yeah, and I know we're starting off with some shorter fields and uh, not as many races as we're used to, but we know that'll that'll climb. You talked about qualifiers on the Thursday morning. They had 12 qualifiers they played host to, so there are a lot of horses getting ready and uh, everybody's chomping at the bit. And I can give you a quick little tidbit. I spoke to Bob McClure the other day. I asked him, I said, what about drivers and, uh, you know, getting ready? I know the horses, they've got to obviously get ready. He said, as far as himself, he's kind of fortunate because he gets to train horses every day. He's been out of Mohawk doing some training, then, of course, qualifying. But one thing he said, he said, expect these drivers to be 10 times hungrier than they were before <laughs> because of the, you know, the, the multiple lockdowns that we've had now. I like it. Hungry is a good thing, and we are hungry to handicap some action from the Campbellville Oval. So let's jump right on in. Coming up tonight, race number four. We got Phillies and Mares now winners of 14,500 over their last five starts. To kick off the pick four, and it's the penultimate leg of that $100,000 guaranteed pick five. A field of eight on the gate, Chad. Yeah, and, uh, you know, talk about myself being a sucker for punishment. I hope that's not going to be the case here with Sweet Heaven, because Sweet Heaven was one that showed so much, uh, you know, want to go forward in her first start here for trainer Ben Bergeon. Locked and blocked since then. She obviously got bet down on both occasions. Got used hard and just wasn't able to see it through. She actually didn't seem to be as lively. Well, you know what? The time away, another drop down. Ben Bergeon's a trainer, I think, is going to come out firing. He did when we, you know, came out of the first lockdown. His first week back, he actually won seven of 19 races. 
And I think he's going to be uh, even more uh, inclined to, to just win, win, win. Uh, we know that he was a finalist, uh, you know, for in the O'Brien Awards for Trainer of the Year. Ended up, you know, settling uh, for that runner-up spot behind Richard Moreau's won it eight times. But uh, Ben's Ben wants wins, and he's going to come out with them. Solid pick, obviously. A um, bit of a question mark, though, with the last couple with her. And you know she's going to be a small price once again. Uh, burn mm-hmm. money over the last couple of starts. So I don't know. Sometimes the drop just doesn't help. If it does, yeah, she jogs. But just in case, I'm going to go for a price proposition. I'm a big fan of Hello Love. That last start, forget about it. Post date was just too tough. And, you know, she was able to run and gun, get to the lead. As soon as she got there, another horse swallowed her up, gave her some cover. But then um, she just kind of tagged along, sucked along the rest of the way. I really feel like tonight getting back to James McDonald, not sliding Bobby, but James has done better with this horse than any driver. 14 of the 20 wins. I think she goes back to a chasing role tonight. And if that's the case, I think she's a big time player. And if the favorite happens to stub her toe, she's just another viable option. I'll go hello, love, but clearly, sweet heaven, I agree. The one to beat. So that is coming up. Sean Stacy, Jason. I'll yep. I'll I'll tell you, Sean Stacy's another trainer that just throughout the years has shown, or the Stacy outfit, they have horses ready to go off the bench too. So that's that's another barn to watch out for. All right. Let's uh, keep it right here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. We are going to fast forward to race number five coming up on Saturday's card. And for the fifth, it'll wrap up that pick five. Good looking field, large field. Then we got some returning horses. Hey, last time we talked about points north on this program, we know what happened, right? Yeah, no, I know. I know. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and points north, you got to think he's got the advantage. He looks like the obvious one, right? Not only is he a talented horse, Jason, but... He's been racing, and that's going to be a huge plus. We saw that in opening night. Pat Shepard had two horses uh, sent out. They both won, and they were both horses that had been racing south of the border. But I'm going to try and beat points north, and I'm actually going to go with Foot Soldier. Now, Foot Soldier had a two-race win streak when we got shut down in March. That was uh, last year in the first lockdown. When he came back in June, what did he do? He extended it to the hat trick. He's a classy horse. I think the draw is good for him. I think if they mix it up enough, look out for Foot Soldier. I believe Nick Gallucci will have this horse ready to fire on maybe not all cylinders, but I think enough cylinders right. to be able to sweep by and hopefully at a price because he won it 12 to 1 when he returned off the layoff last year. Well, there are no wrong opinions going into any race, but I really feel like that's the case here in this one. Uh, you can go in several uh, different directions. I'm going to go even with Son of a Gun. Last time got to the front, couldn't see it through. I have a feeling that tomorrow night when he steps into the paddock, he's going to look around and see if he sees Sintra or if he sees so much more. And he's like, hey, I got this. I got this. I just feel like a little bit of a drop could help. Bob obviously knows the horse well enough. Um, Doesn't have to be up front, but I just kind of feel like that's his preferred style. 34-time winner, a horse that has a ton of back class against a field that is a little bit tricky. So this is a perfect race, in my opinion, to wrap up the pick five, because even if you get to this last leg, if you don't have enough coverage, in my opinion, it's pretty tough. Points north, Osceola 1-1 on opening night, and maybe that one just uh, returns to the good form from the Meadowlands. Wide open, but I will go even wood, son of a gun. Any uh, X factors in there for you? I like your horse. I like mine, obviously. And and then points north, to me, they look like the three ones. I think, you know, Torn Hanover is another one for Benny B that you could toss into the mix there. That's just a good race. Saturday, I know we have some shorter fields Thursday and Friday, but Saturday is a solid, solid program. All right. It's that time. It's that time. Cue up the music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jay and Chad's bet battle. Well, it hasn't been much of a battle. You have been kicking my butt. (laughs) I've got oh, more, one week. more O's than the word good. Yeah, well, last <laughs> week, we should note, your horse got scratched. So you're exact. I didn't even get a chance to get off the ground. My horse, Enforceable, was awful. The favorite did win. Yeah. And uh, you've been just taking it to me. So I guess you should go first. Yeah, look at that ROI. Seriously? Whatever. Yeah, I mean, Whatever. again, we had a refund on our race last week. I, I, I wish yep. I could have made a change. I'll tell you what, if I, I would have made I a change, I would have lost. I would have okay. lost because uh, I would have put, um, uh, was it Strawberry Wine? Is that the horse's name, I think? Um, yeah, uh, some type that, of wine. Yeah. Blueberry wine, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything you drink. Everything you drink. Yeah, 
Exactly, exactly. So let's talk about this bankroll. So if you're just yeah. watching us for the first time, welcome aboard. We get $25 to play a race. Producer Luke Van Belkem selects the race, and this week he's going to go with the 10th from Woodbine Mohawk Park on Saturday night. So this is how we're going to wrap up the work week. And um, a lot of intrigue here. I think the favorite's going to be tough, but if the favorite slips up, it's going to be a wide open event. And a bunch of these coming out of the Valedictory Series, which didn't get completed. Uh, of course, Boxing Day is when we always have that final. I'm hearing that the final will end up being somewhere around the end of March. So these horses will kind of continue to bet into it or, you know, uh, prepare for it. But I'm going to go with Cold Creek Cabo, Captain Video. They're the main ones. But then I'm throwing the 1, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 10 in behind in that third spot. So everything revolves around Cold Creek Cabo, Captain Video being the top two finishers. And I feel really good about that. I think... Jameson it just gets along with this horse, and he's going to be the bigger price than Captain Video. So I'm gonna, just going to go with him as well as a $10 win bet on top. And then, uh, did I even do an exact? I did. Just a straight up 2-6 in here. But I will say Captain Video, who had some issues with his gait in the first couple of starts here, he was awesome in that last outing. Super powerful on the front end. Yeah, I agree. I really feel like the first outing off the qualifier there for Captain Video, just trying to get him around there without making a mistake. And all on his own, he came home in 26 and a bit. That last start obviously was the winning one. I don't really like favorites, but sometimes you can't beat them. You got to join them. So I'm going to play a try. There's a look. Uh, six with two with one, four, five, seven, and the 10. And uh, flat out win bet to... Uh, Maybe just get on the board. I need to get on the board here, Rosie. So even if I get okay. six to five and he wins, I'll be happy with that. I just need to get rid of those damn zeros on the board there. So uh, we'll see what happens. So wins a yeah, win. Next, a win. Exactly, exactly. So next week we get a chance to recap it. Maybe we can both win. Is there a way that can happen? You got is yours all just two six? I can't remember now. Or is it six two as well? Uh, it well it revolves around that. But then I've got a little bit more that you know centers just on Cold Creek Cabo. But we can both win the okay. try. If your okay. horse wins, I've got to, I've got to mix up. Like we should point out, too, that uh, wagering this weekend on Woodbine Mohawk Park's program through HPI Bet, 3% cash back if you bet more than $250 on the program from Thursday right through until Monday. All right, should mention as well, coming up tonight, Jeff Bratt, Monique Vag will guide you through the program. And then you are back in the chair on Saturday. I guess you can't wait to get back too, right? Yes, sir. Reunited with the Parlay Queen. Looking forward to just kind of getting, getting back and – seeing people even if it's from a distance all right uh, uh thank you to everybody who helps make this show possible we need to shout out close ebner for his uh words of wisdom there at the japanese racing association our producer luke van belcom uh, everybody the entire team at woodbine entertainment making this show possible for chad i'm jason we'll see you next week for another edition of racing around the world